Hey, what's up, everybody? Dorn Aldana here coming at you with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. And today we're going to talk about five principles for prosperity every mortgage pro needs to know that hardly anyone teaches. They might scratch along the surface with it. They might allude to it. They might walk a little bit close to it. But most of these principles, most people are not even aware of. If they are, they're only getting a little glimpse of the real truth of the matter. And I want to get, dive right into it. I want to spear it right in the heart today. I want to dive right into the key principles because I've been in the game coaching mortgage pros for 16 years. And I've helped dozens of people go to not only deep, deep, deep six figures, but even seven figures and beyond, even multiple seven figures. And I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly of the things that hold people back when it comes to stepping into their best life, their dream life, the abundant life, but also the principles that really have them go supersonic and stratospheric, the principles that are like little hinges that swing open big doors to big breakthroughs. And so today I'm going to highlight these five principles to make it simple for you to really understand the key path to prosperity you want to keep your feet in alignment with. You want to keep yourself on that path, not to the left, not to the right, but on the path to prosperity. And if you're in this business, you're in it to win it. If you're in this business, you're in it to prosper. Am I not accurate in that statement? If you're in this business, you're here to not only make more money, but to have more freedom, more fun, more fulfillment, and to be able to have that independence, the autonomy to do what you want, when you want, with whom you want, anytime you want. And that is a big piece of prosperity, but it's also the fulfillment. It's also having pep in your step and sparkle in your eye and the sense of zest for life, gratitude, joy, peace. Those are all next door neighbors to prosperity. And so when I'm talking about prosperity, I'm not just talking about more zeros and commas in your bank account. I'm talking about you loving what you do and doing what you love. I'm talking about every day waking up excited for the day. I'm talking about you living on purpose with purpose and having not just lots of money in your bank account, not just having an avalanche of blessing, but being a blessing, not just increasing your standard of living, but increasing your standard of giving. So you're living a life with purpose, with prosperity, with peace, and with a sense that your life is on purpose. Your life is fulfilled. There's not a trying to get to some day land. You're not trying to get somewhere living in a prison of someday, right? Someday I'm going to be there. I can't wait to get there. And that there is not here. It's somewhere out there. If you're living in that prison of someday land where it's like achieving to be happy right now, I'm not fully happy because I need to get there first and then I'll be happy. That's not prosperity. Prosperity is stepping into an attitude of gratitude, joy, peace, and power now. And also having the freedom to be able to do what you want, when you want, with whom you want, anytime you want. To be able to have that freedom and flexibility to be able to live life on your terms. So I wanted to just define what I mean by prosperity so don't, we don't get things twisted. Prosperity is a feeling. It's a, an opportunity to be able to you know, have choices in life to be able to go for the five-star vacations, to be able to liberate the spouse instead of having them grind, working 40, 50, 60 hours away from the family. They can come home and support the family or you can build the dream together. There are so many choices available when you have buying power, right? When you have buying power, there are options, but money in and of itself is not prosperity. It's just energy. Prosperity is a feeling that you have inside of having those choices, those financial choices that allows you to really step into an expansive level of elevated emotions, those abundance vibration, vibration feelings that have you feel uplifted, fulfilled, and living with purpose on purpose. So let's dive in, shall we? The first principle that hardly anyone teaches as it relates to prosperity in the mortgage business is you must feel prosperous to become prosperous. You must feel prosperous to become prosperous. What do I mean by that? Well, if you're just thinking about your goals to make half a million a year or a million a year, if you're thinking about the kind of car you want to drive, 
the kind of house you want to live in, if you're thinking about the assets you want to accumulate and the net worth you want to have, and you're not feeling prosperous, you're feeling lack, limitation, scarcity, doubt, fear, then obviously that is not prosperous. Now, how do you create prosperity? You create it through a feeling. It's not just thinking about money, but it's feeling abundant in money. So it's the feeling that sets up your body in a vibrational frequency of either abundance or lack, either prosperity or limitation. And it's that feeling that sets you up to either be motivated to go out there and conquer your dream or to be in fear mode where you're contracting and you're half stepping and you're pulling punches and you're playing safe and you're playing small. So it's the feeling that dictates your vibrational frequency and that vibrational frequency dictates what you're putting out in the world. What you put out in the world by virtue of that frequency by the law of cause and effect and the law of attraction will attract in kind what you're transmitting. So if you're transmitting fear, guess what? You get more things to be fearful about. If you're focusing on debt and you're feeling a lack, limitation, and scarcity feeling, guess what? You're going to attract more debt, more lack, limitation, and scarcity. If you're focusing on gratitude, what you're grateful for now and your dream life is if you already have it, giving thanks for your dream in advance, now you're feeling the feeling of prosperity in advance of having it in your bank account. And that has you feel more motivated, more inspired. You're taking more action. The action you're taking is filled with a vibrational frequency of victory, certainty, joy, peace, power, poise, confidence. And that frequency of victory is inextricably linked with a frequency of certainty. So now you're coming to your action with your best action, with the best version of yourself. And so that's why the feeling is what sets up the action. The action is what sets up the reaction with the results you get. So that's why you've probably heard you've got to be, do, have. You can't have, do, be, because that's like going to the hearth and saying, hearth, I'll give you more wood, but first give me more, give me more heat. Obviously, that ain't going to work, is it? Because if you're waiting for more heat before you give the hearth more logs, you're never going to see the heat. It's like people who say, I'll believe it when I see it. No, that's not how it works. You'll see it when you believe it. So you can't put the cart ahead of the horse. You got to put the horse ahead of the cart. And it's that belief. It's that emotional frequency of certainty and gratitude that sets you up for prosperity. You don't wait for prosperity to be grateful. You live in gratitude now, and that sets you up for prosperity. But that's only one of the principles. So that principle, again, is you must feel prosperous before you become prosperous. Let's talk about the next one. The next principle is the more value you create in your absence, the more prosperous you will become. Notice the keyword in your absence. That's the, mo that's the key principle that most mortgage pros have no clue about. They're focusing on doing mortgages, doing loans, finding a home for the loan, ordering an appraiser, the appraisal, doing a credit uh, check and getting a credit score. And all, all these things are all important to doing a loan. But again, their focus is being a practice builder, doing the loan level activities versus being a big a business builder. A business builder has a very different mindset. A practice builder does mortgages and gets really good at doing mortgages. A business builder has a system such that those mortgages are done without their involvement. They are the architect. They're not the person digging trenches, bagging boards, uh, you know, laying the foundation, putting the walls up. They're not doing any of the minutia of the building. They're the architect. They know the master plan. They're not digging holes and banging boards and doing the heavy lifting of the project. They're the strategic maestro of the symphony. They are the architect of the building, but they're not the builder doing all the minutia themselves. It might be the case for the first year or so, but the goal is to transcend being in the loan level minutia all day, every day, and to get into being a business builder where you're the architect. 
And the more value you create in your absence by virtue of getting deals done without you having to physically be there, such that you can get deals done while you're sipping a Mai Tai poolside in the Bahamas, in your pajamas, chillaxing with your family, frolicking in the pool with your family while deals are getting done like a finely old machine in your absence, the more prosperous you will become. So notice it's about being able to provide value in your absence that allows you to create true prosperity in this business. That's how you make a million dollars plus per month in income in this business by having a machine, a system that works while you're not working in your absence. Let's talk about the next one. The third principle for prosperity hardly anyone talks about in this mortgage industry is pay yourself first, but not just financially, but energetically. What do I mean by that? Well, of course you wanna pay yourself first in terms of taking at least 10% of your income and putting it into assets, investments, that increase, appreciate in value, that pay you passive income so that your money work, is working hard for you instead of you working hard for your money. But in addition to that, you also want to energetically pay yourself first. What does that mean? It means no matter how busy you become, you're paying yourself the first fruits in the morning by virtue of time to fuel your rocket, time to fill your cup, time to restore, time to elevate your emotion, time to get yourself fit with doing exercise, time to visualize your dream as if you already have it, time to make, do affirmations that have your vibrational frequency elevate. It's called operation elevation, where in the morning you are doing nothing but filling your cup with activities, rituals, and routines that fuel your rocket so that you can shine your light and shine it bright. So you're upgrading your light bulb from a 50 watt light bulb to a 500 watt light bulb. How do you do that? By paying yourself first energetically. So instead of getting sucked into the vortex with putting out fires, managing minutia, responding to emails, pipeline management, and all a matter of you know that paperwork and mundane minutia that you can get yourself caught up with all day, every day, if you let it, especially if you've been in the business for any period of time and you start to do five, 10, 15, 20 deals a month, you'll have no shortage of minutia, true or not true. But doing that is not going to get you to prosperity. What gets you to prosperity is to pay yourself first, not just financially, but energetically. So every day you're recharging your battery. Every day you're igniting your light at a higher level so that you feel more peace, more vitality, more joy, more gratitude, more certainty, more of a feeling that you're living on purpose with purpose, reconnecting to your purpose, reconnecting to your dream, giving thanks for it in advance and building that certainty that it's already yours. That's called paying yourself first energetically. And until and unless you do that, you're never going to achieve the fullness of the prosperity you're capable of and called to. So that's the third principle. Let's get into the fourth one. The fourth principle of prosperity that most mortgage pros have no clue about and most people are never talking about is spending less time doing mortgages and more time marketing mortgages. More time doing, less time doing mortgages and more time marketing them. See, most people in this business, they have the operator's mentality. They're taught to go and get a good education so they can get a good job, so they can be a good operator, so they can follow instructions, follow the rules, punch a clock. And unfortunately, that kind of mindset works great if you got a nine to five job, but it doesn't very, work very well when you're on 100% commission. You eat what you kill with no safety net. And it's on you to create a business that actually creates prosperity. In school, we're not taught how to create prosperity. In school, we're taught to follow rules, follow orders, and learn how to do that technical operational type of tasks that have us punching a clock and being a good employee. But that mindset and that skill set does not translate to being a successful entrepreneur or solopreneur or business owner or 100% commission professional. It just doesn't because it has you focusing on the doing, on the how instead of the why and the strategic play that you need to do every day to be able to move your business forward when it comes to taking market share, attracting more clientele, attracting more quality leads, converting more of those leads into closings, 
and to be able to capture more repeat and referral business. And so all those activities and all those systems that are required to attract more clients, keep more clients, do more transactions with the clients you have and attract more clients to your stable of clients and attract more partners who send you more referrals and to be able to build your stable of referral partners, all those activities are working on your business, not in your business. Most people just work in their business. Even if they're doing 10, 15, 20 deals a month, they tend to just be working in their business. Even if they're newbies, they tend to just be doing the minutia of nursing one deal. You know, They're sitting on the one deal, trying to make that one deal hatch. And they're fretting about the deal. They're losing sleep over the deal. They're coddling the deal. They're putting their feathers over it, trying to warm it up, trying to get it to hatch. And be, by virtue of just being myopically focused on that one deal, they're not getting any more deals in the hopper because they're spending all their time working in the business instead of working on it. And so the key to building prosperity in this business is to spend more and more time doing marketing and less and less time doing the loan level activities by virtue of delegation. So that ties into the last and final principle I want to share with you today. And this is certainly not least of the principles, but the last of them that I want to share today. And that is focus on your strengths and delegate your weaknesses. Focus on your strengths and delegate your weaknesses. But Doran, I'm not strong in marketing. Yeah, well, you need to learn how to become strong in marketing and it's a skill you can acquire. It's the single most profitable skill you can ever learn in your businesses, sales and marketing. And yet we were not taught those in school for the most part. And most of our supervisors, company owners, sales managers, they don't have it to give us either. Sure, they might know how to do it in their own business, but they've been in the business for 15, 20 years. And the stuff that worked for them 15, 20 years ago, it doesn't really work that well anymore. anymore. That old, old school methods don't tend to work very well anymore. So we need to find a way to have our weakness become our strength by virtue of delegating our weaknesses to other people who are unique where we are weak. So if you're not strong in sales and marketing, guess what? There's people like me and my team who are unique where you are weak. So you can start to delegate your weaknesses, which liberates you to dance in your strengths, to operate in your zone of genius. That way, now you can dance in your strengths and you can do what you do best and get the best to do all the rest. Now you're doing activities that you love. Now you're doing activities that charge your battery, light your fire, get you jumping out of bed every morning with pep in your step and sparkle in your eye because you're loving life because you're operating in your zone of genius. You're dancing in your strengths. So we're taught as kids, you need to hem up your weaknesses. We're taught as kids, you need to work on your weaknesses. Now, there's nothing wrong with hemming up your weaknesses. The problem is if you're working in your weakness all day, every day, it's going to drain you. Like for me, my kryptonite is paperwork. I hate paperwork. Like I make myself do paperwork. I'll listen to some inspiration or motivation. I'll listen to some Jim Rohn or some Bob Proctor. I'll even listen to some great music, put on my soundtrack of awesome just to make it a little more enjoyable. But truth be told, I don't like paperwork. I'd even go as far as to say I hate doing paperwork. But if I'm listening to something that inspires me, that gets me fired up, that gets me you know, learning and growing, then at least it feels like I'm not wasting my time. But I will do it as a last resort. I do paperwork as a last resort. Thank God I've got people on my team who do that kind of stuff for me. My accountant, my uh, bookkeeper, my office administrators. Like So I've got people around me that I've been able to now delegate that out. So I have a folder where I put all my paperwork and then my accountant comes about once a month or once every two months and I hand them this file folder and I say, thank you. I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you. And I just hand them this big bundle of paperwork and it's like a huge weight off my shoulders because I no longer have to do it. Think about the things you do that you don't like doing. Think about the things you do that tax you, that annoy you, that frustrate you, that drain your battery. What would life be like if you could just empower someone else to do it that has that be their superpower? That's their superpower strength. So when you delegate it to someone else, who's unique where you are weak. Now you're empowering someone else to dance in their strengths. And when they're dancing in their strengths, taking your weakness out of the equation as the bottleneck in your business, now you're freed up, you're liberated. 
You're no longer being your own bottleneck. You're no longer getting in your own way. Now you're building a dream team. See, success in business is a team play. Success in business requires teamwork. It sounds cliche, but it's true. Teamwork makes the dream work. So instead of you trying to operate in your weakness, like being a short person and trying to you know, play the point position in basketball wouldn't go very well because the point position requires height. Why do you think all the tightest, all the tallest guys play that, uh, you know, post position, not point position, but post position, because the post position requires height in order to have optimal strategic advantage in that position. You need to have height. But if you're a little shrimp, that's not going to work so well. You need to be a point guard on the outside. That's why the shorter guys tend to be the point guards. They're fast. They're zippy. They're great at passing. They're great at being elusive. They can you know, go this way, go that way. And you know they're very versatile and fast. That's why they're point guard. So your strength, if you're short and fast, is on the point guard position. But if you're trying to play to your weaknesses by being in the post position, you're going to get stuffed nine times out of ten your superpower will be castrated because you're not operating in the right position. You're not operating from your strengths, you're operating from your weaknesses. So we got to start to focus on your strengths. What are you really good at? And what are you not so good at? What are your superpowers and what's your kryptonite? The more you can get clarity on your strengths as well as your weaknesses, you can find a way to strategically create a team that allows you to dance more and more in your strengths and delegate more and more of your weaknesses to people who are dancing in their strengths in those areas that you are weak in. And that allows you to have the ultimate dream team to make your dream a reality. So if you're listening to this, watching this right now, you're like, Dorn, I'm picking up what you're putting down. I feel you. This is exactly what I need to be doing. I need to be playing by these principles of prosperity, which is you must feel prosperous to become prosperous. You need to apply the principle number two, which is the more value you create in your absence, the more prosperous you become. The third principle is you pay yourself first, not just financially, but energetically. The fourth principle is spend less time doing mortgages and more time marketing mortgages. And the fifth principle is focus on your strengths and not your weaknesses. So now that you've heard those, now it's a matter of how do you actually apply them? Well, how you apply them is through coaching. Because why do you think the highest performers in any athletic endeavor have coaches? In many cases, champion level performers and athletes have a multitude of coaches. For example, Tiger Woods, he didn't just have a driving coach. He had a putting coach. He had a, you know, he had a chip coach. He had coaches for the different aspects of the game because each coach has an area of specialty. My specialty is helping mortgage pros create breakthroughs. My specialty is helping mortgage pros lock into the best version of themselves, step into their champion self, their winner self, their unstoppable self, and to make their dream a reality. My specialty is helping mortgage professionals go from where they are to where they want to be, to not just increase their income, but increase their impact, increase their sense of fulfillment, flow, fun, and to be able to do uh, what they want, when they want, with whom they want in a way that is fulfilling, in a way that fills their cup and fuels their rocket. It has them feel like they're living life on purpose and with purpose. So if you're watching this right now, you're like, Dorn, I need some help when it comes to taking my business to the next level. I realize my way is not working to create the fullness of prosperity I know I'm capable of. If you're watching this, and you're like, Dorn, I get these principles, but applying them is where I struggle and you're needing someone to hold your feet to the fire. You're needing someone to show you the formula, the recipe, the blueprint, to stepping into true prosperity in your life and your, in your business. Then I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough call where we're gonna lift up the hood on your business. We're gonna have an honest conversation. You get on the phone with either me or one of my consultants. We'll just have an honest conversation about where you're at now in your business and where you wanna be in your business. And if we can help you create a breakthrough in your business, by all means, we'll show you what that looks like. And if we can't, we'll be the first to advise you to pass on our services. We'll perhaps recommend something else or someone else to you. Either way, though, our goal for you is that you leave that call with massive value, massive clarity, and chances are we'll have some fun. So if that sounds meaningful and worthwhile to you, go ahead and book a call, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Keep in mind, this is not a sales call because this is not about selling. This is about serving. 
If we have to sell you on your dream, you're not ready for your dream. So we're not here to sell you anything. We're here to get clarity on the truth of what's going on in your business right now and what it's really going to take to create a breakthrough and to achieve your income goals, your lifestyle goals, and your impact goals. So if you're game to get more clarity than you ever have before, book a call, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Thanks for hanging with me. Thanks for listening. This is Dorn Aldana coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And now it's time for you to take these principles and put them to practice. The principles don't help you unless you align your life with the principles, just like gravity. Gravity is indifferent to whether you believe it or not. Whether you jump off a building and go splat to your peril or whether you use that gravity to bounce on a trampoline and to have a ton of fun and enjoy the principle of gravity in your life. It depends on how you use it. The same thing with these principles. Don't just listen to them and ignore them. Put them to practice. And that's why our coaching is here to serve you guys to put these principles to practice. So again, book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Thanks for hanging with me. We'll talk to you again soon. Peace.